All right, um, welcome, and to, this is what, week three of uh, our discussions about, uh, well, we started out saying it was about unity and submission, and last week we decided it was, there was more to it, it was conflict resolution, and then thurs last Thursday morning the Lord, but he talks to me sometimes when I'm just coming out of my sleep and I'm in a semi-stupor, and I guess that's when I'm the least rebellious. <laughs> So he said, well, you're not really doing conflict resolution. You're really working on, help me spell, A or E? A. Thank you. Two L's? What, what is that one? Reconciliation. Reconciliation. It'll be okay. And so I thought, well, yes, come on in. I was here, really. I saw you. We have a microphone in the center, so we don't have to pass one around. But it does mean that anything you say, well, no, we won't do that. <laughs> but it might be recorded. And so, <clears throat> and so we are talking about uh, because if we are going to have unity and mutual submission. It requires repentance and we will be reconciled. Because in the kingdom of God, our position is assumed to be equal at the cross together. Mm -hmm. So there's the path. Interesting. Comments? You all agree? Well, you wondering? I, I don't just I mean, repentance on the one party, but I can see a, a case for uh, somebody's been assaulted. Mm -hmm. Would the person being assaulted need to repent for the other person? Maybe they would have to repent from blaming themselves for being in the wrong place, if they really weren't in the wrong place. Or maybe they would have to repent from being in the wrong place. Like the girl in Peru with Jor Jorgen, what's his name? Oh, right, the Dutch. Mm -hmm. The little boy was abducted right. in school. Mm -hmm. Does mm -hmm. he need to repent? We know. From it happening? Probably not. I mean, maybe if he snuck out. You know, yeah. I mean, possibly. Right, right. So, um, perhaps the boy's unity with God is not disturbed. And perhaps the unity with his fellow man was completely corrupted by the by the stealer man, by the person who took him. When we're counseling, when we're helping friends, because you may not be in this class to become a counselor, but there are a lot of skills here. Um, I think the thing to remember about repentance is when I am upset with someone, even if that someone is myself, what is it, finding what is at the core of my being upset? Because if there is something inside of me that is not in unity with the Lord or someone, then it's going to impact whether I can reconcile. So repentance from their own thoughts. Could be. That are not lined up. Could be. Could be. So. Can't be. Technically, would be perceived by every reasonable person to be completely innocent. Sure. Just disappeared. Um, 
there's, there's, a, there's a, a, a thing that maybe should be, needs to be repented for, even in many people like that, where they feel like they have done something wrong, mm -hmm. and they have not. Right. And that would interfere with the unity right. with God. Right. And uh, become stubborn. Mm -hmm. Right. To this reconciliation. Right. You use much better words than I did. Of a few comments. Well, isn't the word repentance to turn around and go the opposite way? Exactly. The way it's it's a it's a pivot. Yeah. I think of it as a pivot. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in that case, you'd be repenting of wrong thinking, or blaming yourself for thinking wrongly that you had somehow been difficult. And counselors see this a lot, a lot. And then we also see where sometimes, I mean, probably most of us have spent some time in our lives pretty well convinced that everything is the other guy's fault. <laughs> and maybe that's true, but maybe it's not true. So in the... Uh, building unity and, and mutual submission process, that has to be looked at. And it's, I encourage people that it's not a quick answer. And don't ever, whether you're sitting in a coffee shop with a friend or in a counseling office, always ask for a check from the Lord, whether you're clever because we get clever and we think we know, and we may not know. Mm -hmm. And it's always better for the person with the problem to come to the answer. So our, <coughs> our efforts need to be at helping the person find the answer, mm -hmm. not giving them the right. Now, <clears throat> it hit me that yesterday when I was reviewing some months ago, we talked about foundational faith. A few of you were in the class. And foundational faith, it's, we're not using the term as a doctrine term. It's what we all have some ideas, some faith statements inside of ourselves that we think, that, that, that we act on, that guide our, that guide our st steps. A foundational faith might be, well, my husband beat me, but my job is to make dinner. So I make dinner. Because I, this is my, this is, this is, inherent in who I am and my job. So it's, it's a thought, it's a belief that results in action. 